I'm actually a little bit nervous. It's really weird to me. I, I don't get nervous about stuff, but like just knowing the right gearing and I don't know, knowing how to drive the car. Woo! My nerves are up. This is our first road trip stop in Beaver, Utah. I got a text from my friend Nick Fish, I guess he passed us on the freeway, unrelated to Drift Week, and said that our trailer lights were out. So uh, we decided we would stop at the next truck stop so we could uh, check out the trailer lights. From what I've noticed, all the lights on the side appear to be working, but the ones on the very back are not working. And this is a job for the Power Probe. I gotta go dig it out of the truck. Also, we're gonna take, the, take advantage of this opportunity to fuel up. Um, with our onboard self-fueling system uh, of uh, free black diesel. So um, I'm gonna start working on the uh, on the lights while these guys fuel up the truck. It is super cold down here. We've still got a long drive, but the good news is I got a call from my buddy Dan Brockett. He is going to drive in Tucson. I haven't seen him for a while. I haven't driven with him in a long time, and. I got my pro car and he's taking his pro car. It's a Pro 3 reunion in Tucson. It's gonna be amazing, I'm super stoked. Uh, couldn't be happier, other than being cold right now. All right, so here's the status. The marker lights on the side and the left turn signal seems to be working. And if we come to the back, the left turn signal is working but not the marker light. And the right side we have nothing at all. And over here on the right side we have no marker light on the right side. It's straight missing. And this marker light's not working for some reason. So I'm gonna say maybe there's no signal to the right side. And We do have signal on the left side. So, in my experience in the past, the problem has always been right in this area. Oh, hey, look, it looks like there's some wires disconnected. This might be simpler than I think. And of course, trailer maintenance got neglected on this trip. But to be fair, we did service the tires and the wheel bearings fairly recently, so mechanically it's all sound. But um, I have definitely repaired this wiring multiple times in the past. And this trailer needs a full rewire, but we don't have time for that. So more patchwork. Let's go. I'm Cat Williams. This is Baby Utah. We're flipping barrels. I don't know why. We put the barrel in the wrong way. Yeah, you can have this light. So to, tra to transport these barrels, we have to lay them down so they don't hit the hit the swinging gooseneck trailer. So in order to tip the barrels up, we have to jackknife the trailer. But what was the problem? You guys said the barrel's backwards? So this is down there. You can only pick it up with this side up. So you have to slide it out, flip it around, bring it back in here, flip it back up. This is easily a one-man job. So, we're gonna have to do that to the other one eventually. Yeah, well, Wait, is this where it's been rubbing on the gooseneck hitch? Uh, maybe. Huh. I guess I'm glad they're made out of metal then. Yeah. All right, I think I got it figured out. Um, I stripped these wires back. And then we got these two disconnected and then our green which is our right side so if i touch this over there we got lights on this side disconnected and this other one should be the flash the flash yep yeah. cool so all i gotta do is connect two wires together pretty simple pretty pretty simple also another problem we've had in the past we have these uh i designed these ramps set up like to sit in the frame rail, and then we just use a bolt in the back to hold it. Well, if that bolt falls out, then the ramps can jump off. So we have these bolts in there, but what happens is the nut will start to walk off as we drive. 
and uh, they were almost all the way off and we tightened them when we left the shop and we've only been driving for like three hours, if that. So I really need to tighten these up pretty good so we don't lose those. We don't want to lose a ramp on the freeway. Alright, what have we got in here? I don't have the uh, easy to use crimps, so I'm going to have to use some of these uh, like fold over style crimps and then some electrical tape, which I hope I have. Yep. The problem is this wire is so, you know when you like strip back wire and it's like, like it turns to dust in your hands when you're trying to strip it? That's basically what's happening here. This wire is, is old and corroded and I basically need to replace everything from the front to the back. I just haven't had time to do that or have forgotten. Every time I come back from a trip, the last thing on my mind is uh, working on the trailer. It's usually something else, so. You guys call me out next time. Next time I'm on a video and you're like, oh, I remember when Wicknick said he was gonna fix his trailer and he didn't do it. Yeah. That's me right now calling myself out in the future. All right, so we got our we got our pump set up and everything. The oil's really cold and I don't know if that filter's clogged. We don't have an extra filter with us yet, but it's like, gotta get the light on that. Oh man. It's taking forever because it's slow to a little dribble. I'll show you in, a, in, the, in our next video how fast it flows when it's all warmed up in a warm climate with a good filter but it sucks because like we're just sitting here watching the needle go up ever so slowly what are we saying but don't you lie to me about a warm climate i hope so man it's, if it's not warm in tucson arizona i swear i give up it's gonna be 40. Like a that's pretty good all right kelly can i get an update i am on my perch this is my natural habitat this is your stoop oh stoop stoop yeah, yeah. you're yeah you're stoop kid I'm stoop kid, stupid. <laughs> stoop kid is stupid. Yeah, dude. Uh, I signed up for this, I guess. Well, um, you volunteered. Yeah, I did, yeah. I enjoyed this. I don't enjoy... But we just got to figure out why the truck's not making boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been doing weird stuff. It's been making 10, maybe 12 pounds since we left Salt Lake. And it was making like... 30 gosh. the other day. Yeah. So I took all this apart. So it's definitely my fault. Whatever happened. So I'm bolting the AFC housing back on right now, and because we messed with it so much, uh, I'm gonna put the the star wheel back to where it's supposed to be. I think. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's gonna make power. That's the that's the idea, right? That's right. the idea. Kelly's been driving through the night and uh, we actually ran out of fuel. Uh, we, were able to limp, we were able to limp it to a gas station to get a couple of gallons. But what we need is to go to O'Reilly and get a filter for our um, oil pump. Because uh, it hasn't, um, hasn't been flowing very well. So we found an O'Reilly across the street here. So I gotta go, go, go grab a filter for that so we can fill up again. But uh, we're about two and a half hours from the track. It's nice that it's a little bit warmer and we got daylight. But man, we're all beat. Every one of us is really tired. I got my filters. Time to go fill up. All right, so we are in Arizona right now. We're about two hours away from the track. We just had to stop to fuel. Interesting, interesting thing about us fueling is we carry these 50 gallon drums, right? Um, so we don't have to purchase fuel all over the country, pay ridiculous up and down prices. Is that interesting? Is it Jesse? No, the interesting, interesting? part, I'm, I'm getting to the interesting part. <laughs> the interesting part, the interesting part is we have these 50 gallon drums that will not stand up because of the triple wedge. So every time we fuel, we have to jackknife the truck and trailer. And then Kelly, our resident strongman, has to pick up the tank while we kick it from the bottom to get it to stand up, so. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fiction representation of Kelly. <laughs> I'm a horse. <laughs> yeah, he's a horsepower for us. So, um, basically we're just fueling right now and then we're going to hit the road. Um, yeah. What is that? Camera juice. Old man juice. I can't even put the camera. This is our last, uh, this is our last fuel stop before we get to the track. This is our last fuel stop before we get to the track. Hey man, so eight years, eight years of culminating into this. Are you excited to get to drive your car? Eight years of what? Oh, the car? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a big deal. You're, you're a couple hours away from driving it for yeah. real, for real. I mean, we did that test day at UMC, but it's not the same. It wasn't like real drifting. It was just like shaking it down, and then the engine blew up, so it was like really demotivating. But now I'm like got a high level of confidence with everything we got going on. So like, I think it's gonna be stoked. I get to drive with Dan Brockett in his pro car, and I get to drive with Forrest Wang in his pro car, and then all my buddies from Drift Week. Like, it's gonna be sick. I'm really, cool. really excited. All right. So I stopped uh, at the Loves. Yeah, the Loves, right by Wild Horse Pass Speedway. Um, they have racing fuel here, so I'm gonna put a couple gallons of uh, E85. No, sorry, I'm gonna put a couple, couple a couple gallons of race gas in our barrels of E85. So when I get pumpy 85, it'll make it a little bit higher octane. And it'll water it down a little bit as far as the ethanol content, but it'll give it a higher knock resistance due to the gasoline in there. Um, but when I stopped to do that, I noticed that our oil pump, fuel pump setup is gone. The one that, that we were using our last stop that uh, Jesse was showing, it's gone. The strap failed and it fell off somewhere. I have no idea where it is. So that's gonna cost me a whole bunch of money to replace those pumps, which is a huge bummer and we can't pump oil until I figure that out. But we're only two hours from the track. I really just wanna to get to the track and start driving today. So we finally found ethanol in a town called Casa Grande just north of, uh, in between Phoenix and Tucson. So I'm filling these barrels up. Hopefully it's got a decent, decent ethanol content. It says 51 to 83. So hopefully we're closer to the 83 mark. But like I said, I, I watered it down with some race fuel. So ethanol content may not be perfect, but the knock protection will be there. With, uh, I put one ten, five gallons of 110 to a 55 gallon drum. So that's like 10%. Um, and if I pull some logs and see that it's a little bit lean, I'll just add a little bit of fuel to it. Simple as that. Don't blow up, please. So we're cruising along on the freeway. We're about an hour from the track and um, I go to pass the truck and the engine stops accelerating. It's still running, it won't die. There's no like smoke behind the truck, which has happened sometimes. I've had the fast filter come off and oil down the whole trailer and everything, but it always smokes. So I'm like, well, why did I lose throttle? It's not dying. So we pull over and check it out and Kelly finds the, uh, there's a bolt missing from the throttle bracket. I'm gonna put my shoes on and go check it out. What are you doing? Two out of the three throttle bracket bolts are missing. So Kelly decided we should take them from up here. Mm. Ow. Yeah. Remember that stabby, uh, that stabby hose down there? Yeah, I found it. Found it with my finger. You, uh... Ow. I already showed it. I want to show you getting stabbed. Oh yeah, well. Not only is it hot, but it's also stabby. Hot and stabby. Hot and stabby. Ooh, look at this. Oh, traffic. Good stuff. Brandon was saying, he said, Kelly, what would it feel like if we got rear-ended right now? There are our knees. I think it would be sweet, sweet relief. What do you think? No. No? Mm, well, different, different opinions. Different opinions. I found the stabby hose. Hey, nice. The worst part about it is now uh, I have to get a new glove. Should we test it out? Yeah, I guess. Looks a lot better. The bracket was basically, when you hit the throttle, it would tweak this way, or this way, and it basically, the, the cable was pulling on it, but it's not actuating the other rod that goes back to the P-pump, so it's just like taking up all the slop. And it's probably been that way for a while. So I'm guessing the truck probably didn't have like actual full throttle for the last, I don't know how many miles. I bet it's gonna drive like a dream now. Like a brand new truck. Two bolts, new truck. Let's go. I was trying to be obedient by shutting my truck off. Homeboy came yelling at us, shut the truck off, everybody out. 
like we're getting arrested or something. And I was uh, too flustered to be like, you know what, I shouldn't shut the truck off. I think it's less than okay, so Well, pretty much. It doesn't work. Well, you're have my name down as a registered driver, but uh, luckily she remembered that we've been here before. So otherwise we'd be standing here calling Aaron trying to figure it all out. But we're not. We made it in. Things are going pretty smooth. Even considering the problems. Still pretty smooth. Good times. Happy times. Good day. Go. Positivity. One thing we forgot to do before we left the shop, one thing left on my list was uh, to raise the back of the car because the tires are basically like almost hitting right here and I don't want to like do a couple laps and rub through my brand new fender. So I'm going to raise it up probably an inch at least to start with and see how it goes. But other than that, I think uh, it's ready to drive. You just do that and then go hit the track. And see what's so I get out the power probe and it starts right here. I can't find one. I'm counting teeth on the saw blade. Uh, the Portuguese call it desenrascar. Just means to like figure it out, make it work. My Portuguese buddies will know. Or safar. Figure it out, make it work. Portuguese style. Alright. How many teeth is that? Doesn't matter, I'm using my thumb. My hey, I've seen that. I've seen that same measurement somewhere else. Mm, we need to go up on this side. Where are those teeth at? Teeth. Where's the Where's the adjustment wrenches? What? A medium person? A media person. Media. Yeah. Is that oh. your arm? <laughs> this is kind of a big deal. These are like my my first laps in this car since 2015. I'm pretty excited. These are my first laps in this car on Drift Week. First lap since 
bit nervous. It's really weird to me. I, I don't get nervous about stuff, but like just knowing the right gearing and I don't know, knowing how to drive the car. Woo! My nerves are up. Also, I got no, uh, I got no gauge cluster right now. I really gotta wire that up.
Is that battery number two? That was a, amazing. That was such a blast. Um, I don't have any gauges, so I was kind of like, wasn't sure what my temp was. We came in and I was just explaining to Kelly, like, oh yeah, I don't have any gauges as we see water coming out of the back. And then I realized my fans are ECU controlled. They used to be on a switch, but now they're ECU controlled. So I shut off the ECU to shut off the car. So the water pump's still going. I left the water pump on, but it's circulating hot water that's not getting fan cooling on it. So just stuff like that. I gotta learn, I gotta relearn how this car works. Even I was saying like on the way here, I didn't cut off the main battery switch and like all the helmets that were in the front seat fell onto the switches, turned on every switch on the car except the ones that would have killed the battery. Like all the dead switches that don't do anything. Yeah, just stuff like that. I'm learning the car. Tell me this. But as far as driving, oh my goodness, dude. It just, it's, I was telling Nanami, I, I told her, I haven't driven this car, but it's an S13. You can't mess them up. Like you just put the right parts on it and, and they drive good. Yeah. You can't mess them up. Yeah. And it's wise fab all over, right? Wise fab all over. The only difference between 2015 and now is rear wise fab. Rear Everything else is almost identical. Okay. The, the, we changed the front setup a little bit, but it's wise to have it drives good. I act like I don't know. You remember <laughs> we, we did the we did the Ackerman adjustment the other day. I actually think that that helped a little bit different because when you have zero Ackerman and wants to crab walk and stay sideways, this car actually felt more like the the last Whoa. ten cars I've built that have like regular like Snappy. good Ackerman. 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 Good. Woo. Good. Good. Woo. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Group hug. This is my second session of the day. pits it was idling high i didn't think anything of it because like i haven't really driven it since we tuned it but we went out that time and like the afrs were going crazy and it was like not it wasn't acting right and so we started thinking about it everything the fuel pressure was fine everything so i was like probably a vacuum leak something popped off because that explains a high high idle and a weird uh air fuel ratio so sure enough one of the larger diameter vacuum lines which makes a more of a vacuum leak 
that's popped out. And since I built the car, I know where it goes. I remember. Okay, so I'm gonna go drive the chaser with Nanami because I want to see how well it does on this track. She's worried about mechanical sympathy. She's worried about pushing it really hard. I want to push it like however hard I feel comfortable so she can see what I'm comfortable with her doing in the car, if that makes sense. Because she's afraid to clutch kicking third and wearing it out. But I think we can push it pretty hard and get it to work. So we'll go do a lap. We'll say by andar primero or? Maybe. No, and mejor você andar. Okay, okay. Don't forget the passengers. Okay. Everybody. Everybody? Everybody. Everybody. Okay, guys. Oh, 
Well, that makes more sense. Adjustable and interim. Bam! Oh, come on, man. There we go. He's like, no, I'm home. Wait, there's one oddball coil here. Well, maybe two. I haven't seen that one. I believe you. But they're already out. Well, I'm more worried about putting the new ones in. No, no, no. The boot is the same distance. It's the electron inside. super bummed right now um, I've had four good laps in my car I went out for a second session and it started misfiring and we've been working on the misfire I've driven it like three times since then trying to figure it out Scotty's looking at the map we're taking logs we changed coils we changed plugs um, we haven't messed with the injectors yet but it's 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 just acting really really weird um, it seems to only do it under boost or under a little bit of load not boost and it even doesn't when you free rev it but it won't misfire at idle, so it's really hard to diagnose which cylinder it is. Um, just sitting here in the pits, like I would literally have to unplug each coil and go do a lap probably to, to figure that out. Really frustrated. I didn't want to bring a car on this trip and work. I don't want to be on this trip, but this is how it's going to be. Like I got, I got more important stuff I need to be doing. But at the same time, I said I wanted to figure this thing out, so I'm glad we didn't take it to hot pit and have the same issue and then just have a failed like you know, a failed experience at Hot Pit. Okay, so t today was a little bit rough for me. I had some car problems, which I really didn't want to have, and we're still trying to figure it out. But some of you are wondering, um, Fielding posted something about my chaser also being on the trip. Um, I did not drive my chaser on the trip. Um, long story short, last minute, I ended up renting it out to my friend Bailey because he had some international guests coming, and um, I wanted to get to know her a little bit. Um, her name is Nanami? Nanami. Nanami. She's a Japanese driver, um, and she's also Brazilian? Yes. Are you from Brazil? Nasci no Brasil. Okay. São Paulo. So, being a Brazilian, I'm going to do an interview with her in Portuguese because I do have some followers in, in, uh, in other countries that might understand, and I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, get to know a little bit more about, about you and your driving. Uh, você mora agora no Japão? Eu moro no Japão, Tóquio. Eu sou pilota de drift, rally, e também... É, corrida essas coisas no, no, no Japão e fora do país. Ok. E qual é a sua história de, 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 de drift? Do começou drift, quando? É, quando no Japão começou a vender o 86 novo, uhum. aí teve uma, uma corrida só de 86. Mas para mim correr mais rápido, eu comecei o drift. E o drift é muito. É um, ramo muito legal, aí eu comecei a pegar com o Drift, né, correr, eu corri na D1 Lights, agora eu tô correndo na Fórmula Drift Japão, pra vir aqui pros Estados Unidos, primeiro, eu tô correndo no Japão também, yeah. e vindo aqui pros Estados Unidos, pra mim aprender a, a como correr aqui, como vocês correm aqui também. É sua primeira vez aqui nos Estados Unidos? Minha primeira vez de correr nos Estados Unidos. E então? Super legal, yeah. é, porque no Japão é mais, é, como que fala, é, sério. Ok. Aqui eles são mais fã, né? <risos> mais fã, né? <risos> yeah, yeah, yeah. Por acaso o Drift Week é, é por isso, né? Hum, é sim, mais fã. Eu acho muito legal. Uh, e o carro? Você gosta do carro? Olha, minha, minha primeira vez de pegar um Chaser. Ok. É... De quatro você portas, tem... né? Qu quais são os carros que você tem no, no Japão? No Japão, na Drift, eu corro com vencedora yeah. feminina yeah. daqui dos Estados Unidos. Ok. Por isso que eu tô batalhando. Muito bem, Hi. muito bem. Hi, parabéns, parabéns. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's it for tonight. You can't see me, but I'm gonna close out the video. Thank you, Bailey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so tomorrow we're gonna work on the car and hopefully make it run because I really want to go do some tandems. And we were gonna drive together in the Chaser and the 240, but it didn't work out today. So hopefully tomorrow. But uh, I hope you get more time in the car and more comfortable with with how it drives. Um, thank you for talking to me. Obrigado vocês. And what's your uh, did you your so, social media and yes, those coisas? Sim, é na minha Instagram é, é Tsukamoto Nanami. É T S U K E. Aí você segue os outros S S N S. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Muito obrigado. Obrigado vocês. Okay. Boa noite. Good night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>